Okay, we are going on to chapter 13, um, Vibrations and Waves. Uh, let me share the uh, uh, PowerPoint, and that's here. Okay, uh, we see vibrations and waves uh, throughout. Uh, the, um, you can, just recently we had a pretty uh, powerful earthquake in uh, in Southern California, uh, and the the earthquake there uh, earthquakes produce two types of of waves: P waves and uh, S waves. Uh, for extra points, you can uh, just send me a little paragraph of uh, uh, the the P wave and the S wave, and what's the difference, and which one causes more damage. Just a little write up, a single you know paragraph half a page or so uh, just so you, you become aware of it um, but there's all sorts of waves it, it, like the picture shows there's ripples in a in a uh, a pond they go out in waves uh, my voice headed towards the uh, the uh, microphone is uh, produced by audio waves and uh, even the light that that you see it it, it has a uh, it can be described in, as a wave function. So uh, vibrations and waves are very important in physics. So um, uh, we're going to study Hooke's law. Um, you can see that we can, we're taking a block uh, on a frictionless surface. Of course, if you have friction, it adds a whole new dimension. So for, for this, we're going to um, imagine a frictionless surface. And if we were to, to, there's an equilibrium position. You can see that in the middle figure. Um, when X is zero, the spring is unstretched. The spring force is zero. That's the equilibrium pos uh, position. That's the quiescent point. Uh, if the block is just laying there, there's no force inward or outward. Uh, you can see the equation Fs equals minus Kx. If X is z equal to zero, then the force is equal to zero. Now K is the uh, um, the spring constant um, expressed in newtons per meter, and we'll see uh, we'll work with this on on Thursday. Uh, but you can see that if we were to pull that block out, uh, what would the what would be the force that would we would feel on the block? It would be inward towards the uh, the anchor point. So if we were to pull on the block, there would be a restoring force. Uh, back in the other direction. That's why the there's a minus k. In other words, if, if x is positive, it, if it if you pull x in the positive direction, the force is going to be in the negative direction. The same thing is if if you push the block in the negative position, then the force is going to the spring is one going to want to push it out. So it'll be a force in the opposite direction. So that's where the minus comes in. Uh, the spring force, F sub S, is equal to minus Kx, where K is the spring constant and X is the displacement, uh, typically in meters. Okay, uh, now we can look at, this is really what we're going to do on Thursday. The elongation D is caused by the weight Mg of the attached uh, object. So we're actually going to do that. We're going to look at a... a uh, a little mass, and, and we're going to see how much does it take to uh, extend the spring. And we measure several displacements uh, compared to the mg, the mass that we weigh on it, and we'll be able to come up with a, a spring constant. So that's what we're doing. And I'm going to do a little uh, simulation with using uh, a, a website that I like to use quite often called walterfent.de. DE being uh, Denmark, you know, or Deutsch, uh, not Denmark, Deutsch. It's a German, uh, a German site, but it's it's a little cartoonish, but I think it gives a, a lot of uh, a lot of helpful insight. Um, so uh, let's see. So if, if we go back here, uh, or even here, well, I, they don't show it. The uh, the amount that you pull on the spring, or the amount that you push on the spring before it's released, that becomes the, uh, the, uh, the amplitude. That's, in other words, if you, if you pull it back 
and release it, it'll never exceed that, that uh, amplitude. It'll always move back and forth, especially if it's on a frictional surface, which is really hard to achieve, but we'll assume that it can be achieved. Uh, you'll never exceed that. You know, if you pull it back and let it go, it, it won't you come back and hit your hand and knock it away. You, you just release it. It'll just move back and forth, just coming back to the position of your hand. So A is the amplitude. Um, so the X position moves back and forth between minus A and plus A. Now the period is the time for one cycle from X equals A to X equal minus A and back to X equals A. So if we pull the, the block back to position A, let it go, a cycle is all the way in, it pushes back out and back to the A. So um, that's, that's the, uh, um, that's the uh, how to, to uh, measure the period. It's a, a single cycle. Now the frequency is the number of complete cycles of vibrations per unit of time. So it basically, a frequency is the inverse of the period. Um, all right, let's, uh, uh, now Hooke's law, the, uh, you know, we know from Newton's uh, second law that force equals mass times acceleration. And we know that uh, force is equal to minus kx. So if we divide, uh, this equation by m, we get acceleration by itself, and you get minus k over m times x. Um, so from this, we can see that a max goes from minus k over m, uh, the a being the acceleration. The acceleration goes from minus k over m times a to plus uh, k over m times a. Um, so that's the acceleration. The acceleration is, is most extreme at either end. In other words, as, as the block slides at the end, it's slowing down and it's actually reversing direction. We'll see that when we do the Walter Fent experiment. Um, okay, and that's it. That's it for this section. I'm going to stop it. Um, and I won't show the Walter Fent demonstration till the till after discussing uh, elect, uh, spring potential energy.